Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Bible Cast. We are Bree and Daniel Prophet. Very excited to be here with you today and this week as Pastors Jimmy and Kim are in Israel. So we can just keep praying for them and their experience and tra- traveling mercies for them while they're there and then on their return. And today we are going to continue looking at Advent. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 12 today. And so you can go ahead and get ready for that as well as, of course, grabbing your hot morning beverage of choice. Cheers, and let's get ready to dive in. So, of course, if you are on Facebook or YouTube, you can follow us or hit the subscribe button on YouTube so that you can stay notified anytime that we go live, either on the Biblecast or weekend services or other live events that we have. We want you to stay connected. All right, let's get ready to dive right into Isaiah 11 chapters 1 through 12. Remember, we're in Advent. We're talking about the arrival of Jesus. And so we'll get a little more background and some prophecy surrounding Jesus in this chapter of Isaiah. In verse 1, it says, Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. That word stump right there is really important. It says, Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And going back to verse one, it says, out of the stump of David's family. So in Isaiah chapter 10, it talks about a branch being cut down and a a stump is what remains. And so that can mean several different things. I mean, there's the the exile where David's monarchy was cut down. There are other couple of places where we see just the the David's family being cut down and that the the rule um, being cut off there. But here the prophecy says that out of David's family will grow a shoot, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. But this just isn't any old little shoot that's coming up. This is this is the messiah this is a branch coming out that then in verse two it says has the spirit of the lord and so it is not a dead branch it is not a um, a small shoot um, this is a humble way of saying the messiah is coming and this is these are some characteristics of the messiah the spirit of the lord will rest on him and then it lists seven characteristics you know seven is the biblical number of completion and so there are seven characteristics of here that describe the coming shoot the messiah he will operate in wisdom and understanding he will operate in counsel and might he will operate in knowledge and the fear of the lord and so these are things that we, we can know that as this wasn't, this was a branch that was full of life and it describes the spirit of the Lord resting on him. It also describes the nature of Jesus and who Jesus was. And then therefore, um, what we get to walk in as we follow in his, in his footsteps. And so we are fully empowered also to walk in wisdom and understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit, to walk in counsel and might, to seek the counsel of the Lord, to be mighty followers of Jesus, to carry spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and grow and grow in knowledge and relationship of him and walk in um, in our calling and in, in Jesus' footsteps here on the earth now. Yes, and this new branch will bear the fruit that the original tree was intended to. So this branch will bear the fruit and so that likens us, that sends our mind to the fruit of the spirit. That as the, the, the Messiah will walk in the spirit of the Lord, he will also bear the fruit of of the spirit everywhere that he goes and that picks that that'll have us we'll have we'll pick up in verse three this morning from three to five it reads he will delight in obeying the lord he will not judge by appearance nor make a decision based on hearsay he will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited the earth will shake at the force of his word and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked he will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment in some translations, in verse 3, it talks about he won't, uh, won't judge by sight or by what is heard, but he, he'll judge by righteousness. And so this tells us that the, the fruit of the Spirit, this, the, the Messiah will walk in the Spirit, and he won't, won't judge based on what is seen or is heard. And that, that, that sounds kind of weird when you think about justice, when something's brought before um, a judge, it's, it's the evidence. It's what's seen and what's heard. But what, what is being made uh, clear here is that the, the, this new branch, this, this 
new branch that will walk in the Spirit of the Lord, will judge by righteousness. And that's true for us as well. In all that goes on around us, there's lots of cries for justice. There's a lot of demand for justice. And um, it can be hard to weigh out, well, what, what is justice? And how do we know what is just? Well, this uh, passage in Isaiah is telling us that Jesus judges based on righteousness. Not on what's seen or what's heard, what feels right, what may even seem right but on righteousness. And we know righteousness is, is on his shoulders. He walks in righteousness because he walks in the truth of the Spirit. He, how, he, how Jesus acts and how Jesus lives de- defines righteousness. So the Messiah won't judge with eye or ear, but righteousness. The marginalized will be given justice, and the tool of justice will be righteousness, not simply hearing or seeing. Jesus' words will have the power to judge what is wicked. So we also find that it's not just Jesus' righteousness, but it's his word that defines uh, what is what is wicked. And so those two things become our tools as we engage in the world now. Jesus' righteousness, what he, what he says and what he does, and his word. So, and we know that Jesus is the word in John 1, that he's the word. So, so scripture tells us what is true and, and Jesus' life tells us what is right, and that's how we weigh out all things. Yeah, absolutely. So then continuing on in verse 6, it says, In that day the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and a little child will lead them all. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. How amazing is that? So here we have this picture of of Jesus, you know, in verse 5, it says, He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. And that is a, a, a message for us and shows us how we are to operate until this happens. Verse 6, until the day the wolf and the lamb will live together, until all things are completely made new, until all things are complete. Here we see that Jesus' reign reorders creation. So instead of conquering and killing lions, he remakes them. He redeems all things and and brings peace and restores creation back to the original intent of the garden in which creation itself holds God's righteousness. And so um, in the end, there is more to come. You know, Jesus is coming, and that's what we look forward to in this Advent season. And there is more to come. We look forward to the time when the completeness of um, of of all things being made new is here. And in the meantime, we have a responsibility to wear righteousness and to go and tell the world um, about the truth of of Jesus and who he is so that we can be a part of the part in verse 9 where it says, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. How are they going to know the Lord if not for us being um, being Jesus on the earth and being his ambassadors here? And Romans 8 reminds us that creation itself will be delivered from bondage. And that's what you see the picture here of is that creation, not just humanity, but all creation is delivered from the bondage of sin. Mm-hmm. Verse 10, we pick up in that day, the heir to David's throne will be a banner of salvation to all the world. The nations will rally to him and the land where he lives will be a glorious place. And that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to bring back the remnant of his people. Those who remain in Assyria, northern Egypt, southern Egypt, Ethiopia, Elam, and Babylon. Babylonia, Hamath, and all the distant coastlands. He will raise a flag among the nations and assemble the exiles of Israel. He will gather the scattered people of Judah from the ends of the earth. So the Messianic reign is not just for the Jews, but but a banner to all people. Jesus pulls and draws in all um, of his followers, all of his people back to him, and he will reign in righteousness, just, and peace. Mm-hmm. And that's what we have. that's what we have hope in. Ultimately, our hope is in Jesus. Yeah. Our hope is in Jesus in the that he leaves us the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that he walks in is the spirit that he leaves us. And so we have the ability to receive and walk in the spirit just like Jesus did so that we can engage in righteousness and truth and our hope remains in him. Mm-hmm. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much that you are our hope. 
We thank you so much that you are the one who provide truth and righteousness. And thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit, which we can walk in truth today. Holy Spirit, lead us into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love y'all. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.